and she's kind of looked internally several times, measured everything from liver and kidney function to looking inside of arteries to see if there's been any plaque buildup. Her colleague coming in to test size and thickness. Hi, Evan. Do you ever think about the effect that your career may have had on your longevity? All in all, do you think you made it out without long-term effects to your health? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know why I immediately think back to summer of, I want to say 2003. I was a junior in college, headed into my senior year, and I got in really, really good shape. I was probably like 240 and lean, round shoulders, big arms. You know, my dad really happened to notice that. And this was prior to me ever competing. I remember, you know, he was like, he pulled me aside. We, we were in the living room. He was on the computer. He's like, come here, I want to talk to you. And I went in there and he's like, are you taking stuff? Are you taking steroids? And of course I was like, no, no, come on, dad. Of course not. And I couldn't, I couldn't be like, oh yeah, yeah. And he probably didn't believe me. But I remember him saying, you know, there's people in life and they go through life and they, they try to live healthy and they eat well and they exercise and they don't ever do anything wrong and they get cancer or they, you know, drop dead of a heart attack or, you know, they have some type of something wrong with their health. And his point was, he said, look, the odds of something happening, life is fragile enough without you doing something to tempt fate or to aggravate it. Or take it for granted and, 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 you know, choose to do something that could have a bad outcome. And he was right. I mean, that was logical, sound, good advice. But to, you know, my 21 or 22-year-old ears, you know, I'm going to get jacked. I was always conscious of the fact that the pursuit of bodybuilding could have a negative effect on my health. But at the same time, I was very, very much obsessed with it and hell bent on pursuing it. In my mind, the only viable option was to try to mitigate risk or try to, uh, you know, minimize side effects as much as possible. I mean, I'd be lying if I said, you know, at the pro level or even at the elite amateur level, at the national level, you know, it's competitive. It's competitive, man. You're up against some really tremendous bodybuilders and you've got to be competitive maybe sometimes you're not going to do you know not every decision you make is going to be okay what's going to help me to live the longest or be the healthiest healthiest guy on that stage uh, because god knows they're not judging you based on your health uh, at the same time i was never the type to just throw caution to the wind um, be reckless i always had access to whatever i wanted and i was always fortunate enough to have a job paying good money where I could afford whatever I needed. So if I wanted to simply take more, I could have done that. But I never viewed that as the way to go about it. I always tried to live a life that was otherwise as healthy as possible, right? I'm not a guy who ever smoked or drank or did recreational drugs or you know, went out partying or stayed up to all hours of the night. I was a guy who went to the gym. I worked. I tried to eat a clean, simple diet that I always prepared myself. I tried to take supplements when possible to, uh, you know, mitigate some of the potential effects of things I was doing. And I, I tried to, you know, I got eight hours of sleep every night. I tried to do everything well. Uh, that said, when you look at the general population, there's a lot of people who we live lives uh, every day that nobody bats an eye. If you say, hey, it's Friday night. I'm going to go out and get plastered. Nobody really says much. I mean, it's not, you know, not a big deal. You, you, you smoke, or you do this, you do that. Nobody really, that's all acceptable. But if you tell somebody, well, yeah, you know, I'm a pro bodybuilder, I do what I got to do. Oh, oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> and I'm not saying that it's good, but I'm saying that compared to the general population, there's plenty of people who don't do their bodies any favors, uh, you know, taking into account the fact that as a pro bodybuilder in that pursuit, you do some things that aren't maybe so great for you. You do a lot of other things that are good for you, right? Exercising, lifting weights, doing cardio, getting plenty of sleep, always being hydrated, uh, refraining from the use of um, alcohol, not smoking, using recreational drugs, uh, eating healthy food. 
those are all positives. So, you know, in my mind, I always felt that, first of all, part of it's going to come down to the luck of the draw. To my father's point, you could have people who never did anything wrong in their life. You could have a five-year-old, and this is just terrible, and it should never be this way. You have a five-year-old diagnosed with cancer. Now, the five-year-old has not had the opportunity to do anything wrong, but just because of the way things happen to line up, something goes awry. You'll, you could have a woman in her 90s who smoked a pack of cigarettes a day, and she doesn't have lung cancer. Now, so it's a combination of luck and what you do. Now, at 40 years old, retired from the sport, I've got my aches and pains. Otherwise, um, I believe myself to be healthy. I've, I've had various you know, medical exams. Uh, I have the good fortune of a client turned friend of mine, his significant other, uh, being the head of ultrasound at a local hospital. And she's kind of looked internally several times, measured everything from, you know, liver, kidney, liver and kidney function to looking inside of arteries to see if there's been any plaque buildup. Her colleague coming in to test size and thickness uh, of my heart, all different things. And knock on wood, everything has actually been normal. Well, I always figured at least a bigger heart, right, uh, with it, with thickening of, of the, the walls, especially just being a bigger guy. I mean, something like that is common even in an athlete. So I was very surprised, as was the person performing the test, that even that was normal. I'm certainly optimistic. I plan and hope to live a long-ass time. I have kids. I want to meet their kids. So, um, yeah, I mean, it is something I think about. But uh, something I'm also hopeful about. You know, none of us live in a bubble. None of us should, you know, tempt fate. But if you're going to do something dangerous or something where you're going to take some risk, try to cover your ass, right? Try to mitigate it. And I guess to some degree, that's the best we can hope for. You guys, I love you. Thank you for watching. Comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.